Chosen Path Triangle him survive. In my head, my name is Hikamori Lovely. I have no real interest in the outside world. This is a shelter for me. This has been my environment since I was born. I can make changes by selecting emotions for facial expressions. I can choose between different eyebrows. Almond shaped eyes would be great. My name is Hikamori Lovely. This is a shelter for me. My name is Hikamori Lovely. I can make changes by selecting emotions for facial expressions. I can choose between different eyebrows. I am sheltered for Hikamori Lovely. I can make changes by selecting almond shaped eyes for my shelter. I have no real interest in facial expressions. I am Hikamori Lovely. I am lost in the shelter of my environment. I can select emotions for my shelter. I can select different eyebrows for my facial expression. I can be beautiful to put more love. I can be beautiful to my environment. I can be beautiful if I want it. I can be alone if wanted. I will be alone if it's not wanted. I will be alone because I'm not wanted. I'll be here in case I'm beautiful. I'll be here in case I'm beautiful. I'll be here when I'm alone. 
I'm alone because I'm beautiful. My name is Hikamori Loveless. I am alone. I will be alone. I'm not beautiful. I'm not as beautiful as I wanted. I'll be here alone till I'm beautiful. I will never be beautiful out there. My name is Hikamori Loveless. I'll be here in case I'm beautiful. I'll be here when I'm alone. I'm alone because I'm beautiful. I'm only beautiful in here. Because I'm alone. If you love him, you may meet him again in another lifetime. This is the ending where he dies in beauty's arms. Wow, amazing. And we'll um we'll be talking that was wild. on soon. Um, but I want to thank Maria and Robert A. Skernick. Maria and Bob Skernick, thank you so much for commissioning this piece. Um, you guys are superstars and we love you. We hope we get to see you soon. Um uh thanks everyone for watching. That was special. That was uh commission number eleven. Out of 16, it's going actually pretty quickly, I think. So, One of the things uh, that's amazing, well, actually, soon we're going to be joined by Rohan, uh, I, I believe by Rohan know. and Vicky. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But for, I was just thinking about for Bob and Maria, you know, they're, they're so open. You know, you commission a piece, you really don't know what's going to come out of that. You know, you just have this belief. I want to give young people, or in this case, it's a young person, but I want to give artists a chance to do something new and, and have a voice um and look at this piece it's just completely unique and uh 
otherworldly and you know we'll be talking to Rohan and Vicky about this this everything from the staging of it to the um, sound world and what what a keyboardist role is I mean everything is so different and thanks for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay here we have Rohan and I know Vicky's probably gonna jump on in a second um, how cool, Rohan. That was that was so great. That was wild. Yeah. Thank you. It's so yeah. great to see you all. And it's great to meet you, David. This, I, think, the time I know we've never met before. This is really um, fantastic Hello. to get. Speak okay. again and make sure we can hear you. Say Hello? Hi. hi. Okay, now you're good. Okay. So we got a little we lost you just a little bit. It got a little quiet for a second, but there we go. So tell us tell us about uh, the inspiration. Uh, so just to like feel like like me in. Sure, yeah. Um, so when, when I got the email about doing this, I was kind of, didn't know exactly what I wanted to write about. I mean, I know I wanted to really be a part of it, but I was thinking a lot about like, so there's like very little that has happened, you know, just being in like a very isolated space. The one thing that I have been doing a lot of is playing a ton of video games. I've grown up playing video games. I love video games. Like so much of, you know, my relationship with video games when I was a kid was this sort of fantasy in which I could kind of project an idealized image of myself. Like, you know, whether I could feel beautiful or feel heroic or a number of things. And so when I was coming up with the idea and the material for this piece, I wanted to explore like the various ways in which the video game culture has influenced like my identity or just who I am as a person and the larger project, what Vicky performed is actually like a, a kind of an excerpt of a much larger project. And the Final Fantasy sort of larger uh, thing is a series of character studies where every, depending on which series of gestures Vicky performs, it kind of leads the piece down a different timeline. Um, so, and each timeline like is fixated on a different character. So in this one, it was Hikamori Loveless. In another timeline, there's a character called Bastard Boy. In another timeline, there's this sort of like ominous phantom character called Somnus Alienisium Phantom. And like all these characters are exploring this idea of fantasy, um, you know, what it means to exist in like a virtual space and create your own kind of synthetic sense of self, which for me is like been how I've grown up. A lot. These are characters from the from the real game. No, this I, these aren't characters from the game. So you like, invented these characters. Yeah, Hikamori okay. Love is actually the the name of the, that particular name came from a documentary I watched like a couple of years ago about Hikamoris in Japan or people who couldn't leave their house ever, and they just played video games and kind of immersed themselves into digital media and used that as a way to like I don't know combat their social anxiety and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, Rohan, I, I don't know if you are thinking this way, but, um, and also we definitely hear from Vicky as well. Um, but, you know, when I heard the piece, first of all, the, the, the whole delirium was so magical. You know, Vicky just was so inside it and gave such incredible so yeah. presence, you know, leaning and resting on the PQ. It's just a beautiful way of interaction with the instrument. But it really harkened back to some of the uh, early like political works by Shevsky to me, that kind of like voice that's constant um, and that kind of questioning of, you know, I don't know, it, it's just who we are. I don't know if you thought of it as, I mean, I know you're talking about it, it relates to your experience of video games, but it felt very kind of political, this idea of beautiful, what's beautiful. And, um, sure, yeah. I mean, definitely, I think my understanding of beauty has been very much shaped by the culture I grew up in. And I'm from a very, uh, like a pretty homogenous, uh, you know, white town in Rhode Island, which I've been living here for like the past year and a half now. Um, and growing up, I always kind of felt just because of how I looked and there would be various things that I would hear from friends, friends of friends who would be like, oh, you know, because of the way he looks, I don't want to, I don't want to hang out with him. Or they, they jumped to a conclusion that like, is like, you know, you know, you know, oh, this guy, he's not a musician because he's like Indian. He's supposed to be like good at math and science and like, that's his thing. And that was also like, uh, and it made me kind of like navigate what it meant to be myself in a very weird way. And 
especially the relationships I had when I was growing up. Um, I've definitely worked through a lot of that now. I'm like on the other side of it. It's cool when you're older to like be unique and be different. But when you're like a kid, it's like all you want to do is fit in. And So interesting. Yeah. Well, that no, it's great to hear that because I, I heard it in the piece and um, I just, it's fascinating to hear how, you know, what it emerged, emerged from your experience. And Vicki, how was that for you? That was pretty amazing. Thank you. That was really fun. <laughs> uh, it was been a blast working with Rohan on this piece. When we first uh, Zoomed together and we were talking about what uh, we want to do, and he mentioned that he wanted to do something like written on a keyboard, and I was like, uh, well, I do have this MIDI keyboard. It would be really, really fun to do something different because I've, you know, all the past uh, commissions have been on the keyboard. Um, and I also saw some of his previous work that there was this work he wrote for a duo, uh, Chromic duo for two MIDI keyboards and video and stuff. And I was like, that, that's really cool. And I told him to just, you know, write something weird. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is what we got. <laughs> How did you work out the theatrics and the lighting and the, are you in your apartment, Vicki, or? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sitting in front of the piano and then right next to it is the MIDI keyboard. <laughs> Somehow with that, with the thing draped over your shoulders and with the draping behind you, it looks like you just won the Australian Open or something. <laughs> no. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, we had talked about lighting um, and Rohan originally wanted me to use like a separate monitor and mm -hmm. uh, program something that will, you know, flash different lights and correspond with the mm -hmm. music. But we, you know, we had some technical difficulties um, with my laptop. I think it's, I need to upgrade my laptop. It wasn't able to handle so many processes. So we stuck with like me sending him MIDI and using his setup um, so the audio everybody heard was actually triggered from his home, um, you know, desktop or whatever. Um, I was just sending him MIDI through the internet. I don't know how that works, but it was amazing. Rohan figured it out and I was like, this is really, really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I didn't think that I could also attach another monitor and, you know, all that stuff. So, and I was like, well, I have these LED lights. Um, that we could try out. And so we experimented with that and I was able to just push the button and make it do different things a certain section. <laughs> it was wild. It was really good. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to see, when's the whole piece going to be done and what, 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 what's the yeah. performance? Um, like, what do you need to make it happen? Oh man, I, there's a great question. Uh, I still have been like, I originally I was hoping I would have like more timelines ready for this performance and then Vicky could like, choose a, uh, you know, different options, but that was really challenging. Right now, I'm trying to like figure out if all of the characters are going to be for a single player. There's an, I had this idea too, that certain characters can be accessed, say like, you need to have two MIDI keyboards if you want to play as this particular character versus like, if you only have uh, one keyboard, you can you play as a specific set of characters. And so, it, you know, I don't know yet, Michael, to be honest. It's it's kind of like still coming together, but hopefully, like at least this initial piece, I'll share with the world soon. So I you just did. Say, you just did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah I, just did. Um, I I have to say, I really love. Well, first of all, there are so many unique things about the piece, um, the sensibility and the sound world and the aesthetics, um, and I love that you're breaking the barrier of how you interact with your instrument. So I. I love when Vicky put her cheek on the piano. I mean, it's a small thing, you know, but it's something like breaking that, you know, because usually, you know, you need to sit up and have your shoulders open and play the piano. You know, there, there, there's a technique to how you play the piano, how you sit. And when you break that barrier for a very important reason, it's Everything. incredibly powerful and beautiful. So I love that, Vicky, how you just went down in the, you know, so I don't know if that was like a. Yeah, no, I, I think. Part of what I've been trying to explore, certainly with electronic music, as it relates to like this new music space that we're in, a lot of the times um, I notice a very linearly embodied physicality in, a, in electronic music where there's like kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. That's not always true, but it, there's a tendency towards that and like foregrounding, really trying to foreground the process of sound production. 
Whereas in this particular project and certainly in other projects that I've done, I've kind of wanted to decouple that and use the, think of the physicality as more of a dance form, a storytelling mechanism and the interface that they're using to perform the piece as an object. So like when she's putting her head on the keyboard, like in my mind, I was like, like thinking of like, what would it be like if you could hear like the heartbeat of the keyboard, like hear the keyboard, um, you know, like if it was breathing, like, and, and saying something. So like, that was what that, at least when, when that thing happened, that's what I was thinking about. Um, yeah, it varies from project to project, but I'm just trying to, just something I've been trying to work through. Mr. Rohan, thank you so much. Vicky, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so great. Yeah, this is so great. What a great addition.